Hi. Hallo. Grüezi. I have a problem. A gaming problem. It's not that I play too much or can't stop. I swear I can stop at any time. My problem is this. You see, I love VR games. I think VR... Blah. I love VR games. I think it's just a perfect way to immerse yourself into the gaming world and have the full experience of a game. And get owned by 14-year-old kids. What? What I was trying to say is that I use my laptop for gaming because my laptop has an RTX graphics card in it, which is way better than my 1080 in my main computer. What's the problem, you might think? This laptop should be easy capable of hosting VR experience, right? The problem is this. Thermal management of these things is shit. Absolute dog shit. Very, very bad. I don't know who designed this, but the fans actually pull air from the bottom where there's like very, very little space to even get a little bit of airflow below there. So they're basically suffocated. The gap is super small and this particular model is known for bad heat pipes and not enough thermal paste used. So this thing would thermal throttle quite a lot while gaming and I would lose frames and just drop frames, unplayable. So my solution for that was actually to put it on its side to increase airflow and give it enough fresh cold air intake so it can cool itself down a little bit. But there comes my second problem or two of them. Problem number one and problem number two. So when I put my laptop upright in the corner of my room to play, they will most likely throw it down, right? Oh, you didn't like that, huh? No? So I looked up some solutions on the internet. Not solutions for her, solutions for my problem. But they are either too bulky or too small. So I decided, let's build a thing. In this video, I will run you through the whole process of product development and how to handle annoying cats. Not annoying, sweet, sweet little cat. And we'll show you the whole thing from idea to finished product. How to conceptualize, iterate, optimize, and print your product. I will not go into detail on cut work on this product. There are thousands of videos about that out there. I want to focus on the rest around it. As a 3D printing expert, I design products for more than a decade for companies like Daimler, Airbus, and the German Space Association. So I want to share my knowledge, how I'm going about that. You will see that a good design that follows use will always basically create itself. Let's get started. The idea is to maximize airflow while gaming. So the easiest solution is to have it basically upright like that. So the airflow can very easily reach the bottom. But my computer also overheats with like basic cat work when I do it on my table. And of course, then I need the screen. So I want to have a dual use for that. So I want to have a dual use where I can actually use it open while also increasing airflow by proning it up. So it should support both upright operation, but also let's call it bench mode. First thing you need to do, grab a pan, grab an apple. Uh, apple pan. Apple pan, pineapple pan. I mean, of course, a pan and a book or a piece of paper, whatever you like most. So the first thing we have to do is to write down a list of must-haves and nice-to-haves. So in our case, a must-have would be upright support. The second thing would be bench mode. The third thing is airflow to the fan positions of your laptop. Here I keep in mind other laptops, so the fan positions can vary quite drastically over different models of laptops. Usability. The laptop should be still usable while in the stand. So for the upright position that means attached to a screen with mouse and keyboard and for the bench position that means that the angle of the keyboard and 
trackpad should be comfortable to use. So it shouldn't be like that because you can't really type on that. But it shouldn't be like that as well because then the airflow is bad again. In this stage, I also like to think about USP, your unique selling point. Basically what your product does better than the other product that is already out in the market. It can be something design, but I like to have like a practical USP, something that my product does better than any other else. If you want to distribute or sell your product later, that's what sells your product. So I can immediately think of two USPs for this product. The first was actually the dual use, upright and bench mode. The second thing is that it should be small enough to be carried with your laptop to, for example, work. Because some of the laptop stands I found actually supported the laptop on the bottom full width and it's basically as big as your laptop. So not very practical. I want to raise the screen so I can use it as like a second or third screen on my work setup. And also because I don't want to sell this product, I want to give it to you to download and print at home. It should be easily printing via FDM 3D printing. Now that we have our list of must-haves and nice-to-haves, let's start with some drawing. Don't worry, I'm not a good artist either, but even my skills are enough for that. It's just a rough sketch, just some wiggly lines, but this step actually will get you huge benefit when you start cat working because you already know how your model will look like and it's very easy to then proceed. Let's start with the basic. We can simply start out with like a little block with a slit in top to put the laptop in. This slit, I want to angle it a little bit so my weight goes into a predictable direction and it's not like toppling over into both directions. So let's put a slight angle onto that. Then always have an eye on your must-have list. So one of the main features is to improve airflow. So we can't have these bulky walls like... I personally really like hexagons because hexagons are the best -agons. You know, hexagons are the best guns. So let's put some hexagons in the front and in the back so air can flow through our model. Laptops have an exhaust as well. Normally they are located right here behind your screen and they expel air out that direction and basically to the back to get rid of the hot air. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. So we need to add some vents into our model to expel the hot air. But of course, if we just do the vents on the bottom, it will be blocked by the part itself. So let's give it a little space there. We are finished with our product. I'm just kidding, of course. So now we have our upright functionality. Now let's work on the bench mode. For that, I want to raise my laptop to about that height because it's very comfortable for my fingers. Because we already have an angle back in the slit, we can choose that angle to basically put the screen very upright in a comfortable reading position and lower the second wall to support the bottom of the laptop. Most laptops these days have these little latch here. I looked at many different laptop manufacturers and nearly all of them use that as a standoff feature for the airflow very unsuccessfully, apparently. So we can use that to latch on to secure our laptop against like basically just slipping off. And that also, in the meantime, gives us the width of our slip. This gives us already the height of the model, the height of the back wall, the height of the front wall, the angle of the slit, the angle of the top faces, the design on the front and the back wall, without even thinking about it or making it up. As I told you, the design basically creates itself. So let's look at our list again on stuff we have to do. Oh, we got basically everything covered already. So now let's make it pretty. Alex, how beautiful. I already love the hexagons, but it's very bulky. A lot of material in one place. So let's remove as much of that as we can without compromising the structural integrity. I also don't like these super harsh 90 degree angles. So let's put like a little rounding onto it, make it flow a little bit, make it smooth and flowy. That already looks 
awesome. But the front looks a little boring, so I want to add a logo to it. My logo, coincidentally, is a hexagon. I want to add that to the product because it's just perfect for that. But I don't want to add another hexagon containing a hexagon on a hexagon pattern because that's way too much. So this time I will use a circle. Also, it looks a little blocky, so let's angle the sides inwards a little bit. So you might have recognized that I haven't given 3D printability a thought yet. That's on purpose. In this stage, I don't want anything to distract me from designing my part on functionality and design and just let creativity go wild. Also, because my computer gets really hot while gaming, I will use selective laser sintering PA12 for my product using our sponsor PCBWay. More on them later. Because selective laser sintering doesn't need any support. The part is basically supported by the powder it's printed in. I don't need to worry about printabilities or angles. But of course I know nobody has an SLS machine at home and I want you to be able to also 3D print it at home. Let's make it printable for you guys. So we ended up with a very nice product that looks good, has an awesome functionality, but is not really 3D printable in FDM. Let's have a look at all the features and get it printable. Let's first think about orientation. Oftentimes you can make a product 3D printable by simply changing its orientation. In that case, it means we put it on the side. So from here, I analyze all the different features of my model and see if they could print without support. So the first thing that immediately jumps my eye is the hexagons. They will use a truckload of support, but we can fix that very easily by simply turning the hexagon pattern so the tips look upwards. And look at that, no support anymore. So the second problem I can already see is the legs. Because of the 90 degrees angles, the bottom one will print flawless, but the upper one will need support. So why not just put a little chamfer on that, angle it, on 45 degrees, so it can be printed without support. I think this even improves the flow of the model. So with that done, let's get to prototyping. Don't worry if you need multiple prototypes and iterations for your model. For some projects, I use dozens of prototypes. For example, my automated plant watering systems had about 30 to 40 reprints before I got it just right. So here we have our prototype. By the way, if you don't have a 3D printer, Simply use the service of our sponsor, PCBWay. Simply download the file in the description down below, upload it to their website, choose your desired material and finish and... There we have it. Of course, it's not that fast, but this one actually showed up within five days. So let's unpack that. That looks gorgeous. I've gone for a PA12 and selective laser sintering with black dye coloring and it's just perfect. But I actually like the PLA marble one really good as well. So let's test the upright first. You can put it in that way. Very nice. You can also have the logo facing you. Super awesome. And the pattern back here provides awesome airflow. I can actually feel the air going in. But what is with the bench top mode? So this latch latches into here. Oh, and it really holds it in there. We go up. We have the perfect angle to work on. Oh, that's very nice. No looking down. I have a straight line of sight. My hands are very nicely supported in the perfect upright position. And what's also cool, like back here, the angle matches the angle of my screen. And it's very secure. And it's also super compact. I can also close it and it just drops in. I already have some idea for version two what about an active cooled version powered off your USB port where it actually pushes air below your computer? So let me know in the comments down below if you would like that and of course subscribe to don't miss that. And other than that, enjoy some awesome 
cinematic shots. See you in the next build.